Joining us now in studio with more reaction to the night's breaking news is Dr. Richard Fershine is with us, Dr. Eric Braverman and forensic pathologist Dr. Michael Bodden. Um, the CDC did change. They originally said you had to have direct contact with bodily fluids. Well, that evolved into, well, you might be able to get it if you're three feet away. As John Roberts reports, nobody can pinpoint the exact moment that they got this disease. Do we really have a full, complete answer? No, I don't think we have a full, complete answer, but we have some answers. And I think that New York City has among the best uh, infectious disease doctors in the country, in the world, and they're working on it. And I think that they're casting out a big, a big net to cover everybody. I would suspect over the weeks and months ahead that this uh, infection will run a course, as they have always done in Africa. Africa, since 1976, they've had Ebola outbreaks. the outbreak. government has been wrong time and time yes. again. Dr. Frieden said, you don't need a special hospital room. All you need is a private room and a private bathroom. Uh, the president said, in the event, we, we've taken the necessary precautions, working with African countries uh, to make sure someone with the virus doesn't make it to the U.S. Right. In the unlikely event that it makes it here. It's here. They've gotten things wrong. Two nurses were infected, and now it's in New York City. Right, but so far the precautions have kept those numbers of people who've gotten Ebola in this country quite low. What about we'll the 233 health care workers in West Africa? The, I, I would assume these are people right. that understand the nature of this virus. They contracted the virus. Dr. Braben, unbelievable. These decisions obviously have to be political, not historical or medical. We know that nobody knows when they get the flu virus who gets it in a room who gets it in an office it's impossible when you're dealing with 82 day incubations and in semen and other fluids i mean he could have had sex with five women we don't know or five men and nobody knows that the first rule has always been quarantine and stop the flights in whether it's an ellis island type quarantine where a worker comes in and he has to go to a special location to be watched for three weeks or four weeks or longer you have to do that. It's right. obvious. Well, it's, or you're going to have it spread all over the place. Let's talk about the quarantine period. That was originally 21 days. The World Health Organization now turned, changed it to 42 days. Uh, if you look at these numbers, they were predicting at the WHO 10,000 cases per week. They said about 10 or 12 days ago that we had 60 days to control this disease. They raised the death rate from 50 to 70 percent. The fact that they keep changing makes people nervous. Should it not? Yeah, I, I think... You know, people should be concerned. I think one of the factors here is that where we are in, you know, the best place for dealing with a problem like this, New York City does have some of the finest doctors in the world. I think what we're all asking here is what happened with this particular individual who was clearly in contact with Ebola, came down with, with the virus, and he was allowed to move freely within New York City for a period that wasn't within the constrained period We're talking of about a six-day period of yeah, time. Yeah, I mean, he's, he, he, and, and, you know, this, this guy is a hero. I mean, he went out, he did an amazing thing. I agree. You know, he personal, obviously didn't put his think life he contracted online. the disease. I agree. All of these health workers deserve to be commended. But he did go to a bowling alley. He did use a car service. I bet those people yeah, that that's, may that's have come into question. contact with why, him are worried about Why, it. if we know that someone has come in contact with Ebola, and we know that these workers are coming in contact, why are we allowing them to move freely when they return back to the United States. That's that's a sure. serious question. Now. Unbelievably, he's a doctor. He knows better than the average public. So if an average individual can't is is going to figure this out, they're not going to figure it out. I mean, right. they're not going to do it because doctor did it. We need our subways with Purell. We need hygiene everywhere. It's our airplanes hygiene. You need hygiene protection, hand washing. An entire nation is not prepared for what happened in 1919, where flu killed as many people almost as World War One. Dr. Right? Bodden, you seem less pessimistic than Dr. Braverman. Do you, do you see any scenario under which you think this might spin out of control? I don't think it's going to spin, it, spin out of control. I think we, we're going to get more cases. We're going we are to get, going to get more cases. And we'll get some uh, deaths also. But that's the nature of epidemics. And they run it. So far, all our ep epidemics and the Ebola epidemics in Africa have run a course. People have contact, contracted it. Many people have. And then it runs out. And I trust that with all the precautions that uh, that uh, CDC is always taking, which may be too much rather than too little, for example, right, we'll, we'll get it under control. We're going to stop you guys here.